What if I told you every game of Catan could be won, not through luck, but through maths? From the roll of the dice to the placement of your settlements, every decision in Catan is a mathematical equation waiting to be solved. In this video, I'll break down the math behind winning strategies, which resources matter most, where to build, and how to outsmart your opponents using nothing but numbers. Whether you're a casual player or a hardcore strategist, stick around because by the end of the video, you'll never look at Catan the same way again. I'm assuming if you're here, you know what Catan is, but if you don't, you build some settlements on a map and connect them with roads. Every turn, someone rolls a dice, and the number rolled corresponds to a number on a biome. Then you get the resources if you're adjacent to said biome. You spend these resources to build more settlements, or upgrade them into cities, or build roads to connect them all. The game is won by collecting points. When you reach 10 points, you win, and settlements are worth 1, and cities, because you upgrade a settlement, are worth an additional 1, so 2. The achievements are Longest Road and Largest Army, both worth 2. Only one player can have an achievement at any one time. Development cards are an additional way to get victory points, where they have a chance to draw just a victory point, and you use them to get your knights to have your largest army. If you want to see a deep dive into development cards, let me know in the comments below. When it comes to achievements, Longest Road requires 5 plus roads, and each of these are 2 resources each, so 10 plus resources in total. The largest army requires 3 plus knights. That's 3 resources per development card, so that's a minimum of 3 resources if you draw your first 3 knights in the first 3 development cards. If you're building 3 cities or settlements, then you're not going to naturally get the longest road, you're going to have to build an additional road to get the minimum of 5. However, if you're going for the 4 plus settlements or cities, you'll naturally get the longest road as you have a minimum of 6 roads in between all of your settlements and cities. It gets a little bit more complex when you look at the largest army. This is because as you draw cards out of the development deck, the number of cards in the development deck changes. So therefore, as you draw a card, the percent chance changes for what you're going to draw each time you draw. As such, I've done the maths so that you can see the number of draws, the percentage chance to draw three knights, and the percentage difference between each of the different levels. So for example, to draw all three knights on your first three draws, it's going to be a 16% chance that you do so. When you draw four, you're going to get an additional 24% chance that when you draw that fourth card, you will have the third knight. When it comes to five draws, it's a 62%, so on and so forth. Going forth, I'm going to assume you're going to get it at the five draws mark, since that is over 50% of the time. So when you look at the number of draws, the resources invested, and then the number of victory points you get for that, you can see when you have the number of draws being 3, you can only get 2 victory points from having the largest army. When you actually increase your number of draws to 4, you have a higher percent chance to draw one of the victory point cards, therefore having a victory point of 2 to 3. When you increase your number of draws above 4, you have a much higher percent chance to actually draw one of these victory points, and therefore you're tending towards 3 victory points for your number of resources invested. It is therefore more important to invest your resources at 5 or 6 rather than 3 or Four. If you're going for the largest army, you're likely to need less settlements due to getting the extra victory point while collecting your knights. Now there are 5 main win conditions that I could think of, but if I've missed any, please let me know. 4 cities plus the longest road, 2 cities, 1 settlement, longest road and largest army, 3 cities, 2 settlements, the longest road, 2 cities, 3 settlements, the largest army, and finally 1 city, 3 settlements, the longest road and the largest army. Any of the situations that include the largest army are assuming you're going to get one victory point from the aforementioned drawing. I've taken the five win conditions and written them out so you can see how much of each resource is required to get that win condition. I've then totaled them in the final column. The second one has an extra brick in a wood because you need an additional road because there's only two cities and one settlement, as mentioned before. It's important not only to look at how many of each resource is required, but how often those resources will come up on average. As the board is not made even, there is a tendency for there to be more wheat wood and sheep. As such, by combining this and the win conditions, we can actually see how often each win condition is likely to come up based off of their average output. To combine the resource availability and the win conditions, you can make the total weighted needs, which is the resources needed per win condition, divided by the area of the map that that resource will cover. This is the table that we get at the end of that, and all you really need to look at is the totals at the end. As you can see, there are different totals depending on how much of each resource is required, and how much of the map that that actually takes up. You can get the resource importance index by taking the number we just calculated and dividing it by the number in the total column. This gives us a percentage for each of the resources, how common they are, and how useful they are for that specific build. So for example, for the first one with the four cities and the longest road, 
25% of all resources that you'll need for this build are bricks, 28% are ore, etc. Now I'm sure a few of you have been shouting at your screens wondering how the dice rolls come into all of this. Well here we go. The dice rolling statistics for a 2d6 results in a normal distribution across the different numbers rolled. The 2 and the 12 have one combination that can make it, the 3 and 11 have two combinations, all the way up to 7 which has six combinations. Therefore, rolling a 7 is the most likely and that's why the robber comes up so often. We can then look at the statistics and the probability of how often each of these will actually come up. And as you can see, the rolling a 7 is going to come up 16.7% of the time, whereas rolling a 2 or a 12 is actually at 2.8% of the time. The difference between each of these probabilities is 2.8% and going forward I'm going to round that to about 3%. This 3% is actually really key to understanding what number we should be aiming for for what resource and you'll see how I'm going to use that going forward. Now we need to look at the relative token score which is essentially a measure of what level of token do we need to get on our hex for it to be worth it for each of the win conditions. To calculate this we do 6 minus the highest percentage for that win condition minus the resource we're looking at divided by 3. The 3 comes from the 3% as we calculated earlier. An example can be shown for brick in condition 1. We do 6 minus 28 because that's the ore, the highest percentage, minus 25 divided by 3 so we get 6 minus 1 and that equals 5. So therefore for a brick we should be aiming for a 5 or a 9 since that's the opposite. So I've done the calculation for each of the win conditions and as you can see there are some strange results in condition 1 and 3. The sheep is in a minus result which therefore means that it's so not useful to these win conditions that you might as well not take it and go for something else entirely. Anything that's at a 5 or a 6 is highly valued by this win condition. A 4 or a 3 is in the middle ground where it's useful to have it and anything at a 2 is essentially if you've got it it's great but don't aim for it. A lot of effort has went into this video and if you've liked it so far please hit the like button as it helps me a lot. Thank you very much. Now let's get into the analysis of what condition is best. The condition that has the most total resources is the fourth one and therefore might be a slightly slower one to go for. All of them don't require sheep and therefore sheep are pretty useless and you can trade them away pretty easily. This is also not going to benefit the people that you're trading them to so if someone's taking your sheep it's actually a pretty good thing for you since they're not getting any benefit out of it. The two conditions that have got the lowest number of resources required are number one and number two making them a little bit quicker to get to in general. If you go for the four city strategy you'll have a high resource income due to the number and level of cities on the board which goes well with it as it's got one of the lowest total resources required. For the second win condition as this method has the lowest total resources needed, it should be the fastest to complete. However, it also has the lowest resource production of all the different methods, which will slow things down. The resources are spread quite evenly, making it good for the last player in the turn 1 due to having the back to back placements and you're going to therefore get the most average placements on turn 1. Getting at least one of every hex would be preferable, focusing on having strong brick and ore, average wheat and wood and of course sheep is least. If you can get a really good or a double brick hex, go for this one and ignore sheep entirely and just trade for them. It's important to have a strong wood, although you're mainly aiming for the brick. The total cost for this one's a little bit higher, but you have one of the highest possible resource generations of all the win conditions. As such, you should be fine. This is definitely a win condition for player one, as you can focus on getting the strong brick hex at the start. Win condition number four works really well if you can get a good brick hex and favours the last player due to the rest of the resources being quite even. Where this method is really useful is if you're playing with someone who is going to get the longest road and then you just don't have to compete with them because you're going to be drawing from the development tech. You're requiring luck to be on your side when drawing from the development tech but this may allow you to win faster or slower luck depending. The biggest drawback of this method is the sheer number of resources required to make it happen whilst not being the best resource production possible. The final win condition also favours a really strong brick placement as well as a good wood placement. If you're able to secure these in turn 1 this may be a viable option however due to the total number of resources being quite a lot and the other resources being quite even you're likely to run into issues securing enough resources to finish the game. This is especially detrimental to this method as it requires you beat everyone for both of the achievements as such I think that this is the worst method on the list. I think win condition 3, the 3 cities, 2 settlements and longest road is likely to be the most consistent and best method to victory. It has a strong focus allowing it to be easily played and only requires you have really strong brick. If however you can't get your hands on brick I would suggest going for the 4 cities and longest road as it does a little bit of everything, it has really good resource generation and it only needs good and not strong hexes to win. If you think I've missed a win condition or something I haven't thought of please let me know in the comments below. Normally the comments are alive with different ideas and concepts that people have came up with so please have a look there and let me know of anything that you think I might have missed. Thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day, bye bye.